Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Donna Michi and Lucille Ball in Lucky Partners. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And joining us tonight, I wonder how many of you realize you've exercised a very special freedom. It's a freedom that no fascist country enjoys. But it's guaranteed for us by a great document, the Bill of Rights. Under this bill, which America commemorates today, we can, among other things, say what we think, read what we like, and listen to what we want to on the radio. And tonight on the Lux Radio Theater, your freedom of choice is bringing you RKO's delightful comedy, Lucky Partners. It's a rollicking story of two people who believe so thoroughly in luck that they are willing to take chances on both love and horses. And those two people in our play are tonight's stars, Don Amici and Lucille Ball. In a little while, we'll see how they make out with Lady Luck. But here's something we want to take no chances on. Our 10th anniversary celebration on October 16th. For that birthday of ours, we want you, and that means all of you, to help us select the play and stars that you want most to hear. Just drop me a postcard dated no later than September 27th to Box 9, Hollywood 28, California. Recently, I was amused at a newspaper story with a London dateline, a reporter's account of an interview with Adolphe Monjou, who was overseas entertaining the troops. He found Adolphe in his hotel room, bent over a tub, immersed in suds. The reporter says he tossed me a bundle of socks, handkerchiefs, and a package of luck which he'd somehow brought over in the airplane with him. And he tells how they finished Adolf's washing and hung it out to dry from the windows of one of London's swankiest hotels. In these days, when we have to shift for ourselves in so many ways, Lux Flakes is a good traveling companion. Now it's curtain time again. And here's the opening act of Lucky Partners, starring Don Amici as David and Lucille Ball as Jean. <laughs> about to relate a pre-war fable. It involves a whistling artist, a girl who had to deliver some books, and a street in Greenwich Village. The whistling artist was a complete stranger to the girl who had to deliver some books, but that didn't bother him in the least. And one morning, as he passed her on the street in Greenwich Village, he stopped whistling long enough to remark, Good luck. Whereupon, the girl with the books, being as curious as she was attractive, spun around and asked a perfectly natural question. What did you say? I wish you good luck. Well, why? Oh, no special reason. Oh, I see. Well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, that's how they met. And now, an hour later, the girl rushes back to the bookstore where she works. But this time, she has a different package under her arm. Aunt Lucy, Aunt Lucy. Is that you, Jean? Yes, and look, look, this dress. Did you ever see anything so beautiful? Oh, it's gorgeous. Where did you get it? Well, after I left here to deliver the book to Mrs. Adams, I passed a man. He was whistling, and as I passed was him... Was he good-looking? I didn't notice, anyway. What do you mean you didn't notice? A man whistles at you, gives you a perfectly dazzling dress. Oh, he and... didn't give it to me. Uh... He didn't give it to you? I just passed him. Oh, you make me furious. Oh. You remember I left here to deliver some books? Oh, yes, dear, perfectly. Good. Well, when I was delivering them, a girl walked out. She was mad as a hornet. Oh, the man's girl. She had nothing to do with the man. Uh-huh. The girl was at Mrs. Adams' house, her daughter. She's leaving her husband. She was throwing away her clothes or something, and she gave me this dress because it reminded her of her husband. Now, do you understand? Uh, just relax, dear. Perhaps it'll all come back to you later. Oh, oh uh, incidentally, Freddie just phoned. Look, Aunt Lucy, across the street. Hmm? There he is now, the man I was telling you about. Oh, Mrs. Adams' daughter's husband. The man who wished me good luck. And don't you see, I had good luck. I've got this dress. Oh. Here, hold the dress. I got an idea. Uh, where are you going? The man, I gotta see him. Well, hurry back, Freddie said in ten minutes. Oh, uh, Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. Me? Yes, could I see you for a second? Why, well, certainly. I'd, uh, 
I'd like to make you a proposition. What? A business proposition. Oh? Could I meet you in, say, an hour at Nick and Nick's? Where? Nick and Nick's. Uh, who's Nick and Nick's? The barn grill around the corner. They own it. Two brothers. Oh. You must be new around here. Yes, yes, I am. My name is Grant. David Grant. Oh, I'm Jean Newton. I work right across the street there. My aunt's shop, the book nook. You're sure I won't be putting you out? Oh, no, no, not a bit. I work here, too. You see the sign there on the second floor window? Oh, that's you, huh? Portraits, one dollar caricatures? Uh-huh. Likeness guaranteed. Well, I'll see you later. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Bye. Well. Yes. Might have known you'd find me. The door was open, so I walked in. What do you want? Look, I'm not just your lawyer. I'm your friend. I want to talk to you. Want me to come back, is that it? Of course I do. Caricatures at a dollar a throw. You and this place, why, it's beachcombing. Look, I can understand you're feeling bitter. You think of yourself as no, a jailbird. No, I don't think I feel bitter. Anyway, let's forget it. Besides, I got a date in a little while. Can I have ten minutes? Oh, all right, sit down. Give me one good reason why you won't come back to Chicago. Oh, I can give you a dozen. But don't you understand? What happened happened three years ago. You're a famous artist. You can't let that ruin your life. You're a young man. Hello, Jean. Hello, Nick. I want to buy a sweepstake ticket. But yesterday you said you was offing them. Well, yesterday I was offing them. So now she's on them. We're supposed to sell the tickets, not touch people offing them. You're lucky. Only one left. Here's the ticket. Nick, write down the name. What is the name the plum lady? Uh, um, two strangers. Uh-uh. Me and him got that. Nick and Nick. Well, how about two pigeons? Okay, two pigeons. Hello. Oh. Well, I guess we better sit down someplace. Huh? Show the pigeons to a table, Nick. Okay, Nick. This way, nice and private. I hope you don't think this is too silly, but I'm playing a hunch, and it has to do with you. Mm hmm You see, it all began this morning when you wished me good luck. Well, I ran smack into some good luck right away, and suddenly I began to feel lucky, you know. Vaguely. Well, all I want is for you to share a sweepstake ticket with me. A sweepstake ticket? Uh. You want to win some money? Well, sure. Oh. What do you want money for? I plan to get married. Oh. To a fortune hunter? He's nothing of the kind. Well, then why doesn't he take his yard? Well, he'd marry me tomorrow if I wanted him to. And what business is it of yours, anyway? I'm sorry. You were saying that if we win, you get married? Yes. And then what? Then we leave for Poughkeepsie, Freddie and me. Honeymoon in Poughkeepsie? Uh, we're going to live there. But what about your honeymoon? Well, that'll have to come later. Oh, no. No, that can't come later. Why, why that's terrible. I can't possibly be a party to a scheme like that. And besides, what sort of a man in these days demands a dowry? Uh, is he a foreigner? Of course he isn't. He wants the money. He doesn't want the money. I do. Oh. Oh, I see. Tidy reserve in the event married life. Doesn't go so well, is that yeah. it? No. Oh. Well, what is this jerk? I mean, your fiancé. Uh, has he has he got a job? He's an insurance engineer. He's a what? Well, he sells insurance. <laughs> Look, do you or don't you want to buy the other half of my ticket? Well, I'm debating it. Money breeds everything that spoils the nice things in life. Meanness and hatred. Okay, goodbye. On the other hand, if I could accomplish something worthwhile with my share of the fortune... Well, what's to stop you? Only you. Me? That's right. I'll buy half the ticket if you let me apply my winnings toward a proper and complete honeymoon before you settle down in Poughkeepsie. I couldn't let you pay for my honeymoon. Oh, it'd be a very great pleasure. Honeymoons are one of the things in life I still regard very highly. Well, well, if you insist, I think maybe I could convince Freddie. It's a deal. Well, that's wonderful. We'll get some champagne and drink a toast to what I confidently expect will be the most wonderful experience in my life. Our honeymoon. Just a minute. Did you say our honeymoon? That's right. Would you mind waiting here for a moment? Oh, not at all. Uh, you'll be back. You bet I'll be back. Hey, pigeon. What's the matter with the other pigeon? Well, nothing. She's pretty mad. I heard what you said. I bet she's getting a boyfriend. He's an awful big guy, mister. How much do you weigh? Oh, 160. Feel him, Nick. Looks pretty flabby. Yeah. Bloat. No reach, neither. Yeah. Better have a cab ready to take him home. Where do you live, Jack? Just around the corner. Thanks a lot. There he is, Freddy. There. 
Hello. Would you mind repeating to my fiancé what you said to me? Yeah, chum. What'd you say to her? Or are you scared he'll misunderstand, too? Unless I'm a very poor judge of intellect, Freddy will grasp it instantly. Tell him. Well, honey, give the poor fellow a chance. But he insulted me. Well, you just told me he bought a sweepstake ticket with you. Yes, and if we win, he said I'd have to go on a, a trip or something. Well, what's the matter with that? But he said with him, Freddy, before I marry you. Oh, he did, huh? Yes. Okay, chum. Suppose we step outside in the alley. <laughs> but what on earth can we do in the alley that we can't do in here? <laughs> Plenty, chum. Outside. Now, you wait here, girlie. This isn't for your eyes. I'll be right back. Go out and stop it, Nick, please. Me? That football player murdered me, too. It's been ten minutes. He'll kill Mr. Grant. Ain't that what you wanted? Oh, I just wanted him to sock him once. You don't think I... Look! It's Freddy. He's back. I a champ. It's the other guy, too. He's talking to Freddy. Yeah, I'm laughing, too. His hair ain't even master. Well, sure, I think it's a wonderful idea. Swell. Freddy. Yeah, honey? Didn't you... Did... Oh, of course not, honey. He explained the whole thing to me. I think the first thing we should do, Miss Newton, is make a list of all the things we want to do on our trip. There, he said it again, just now. Oh, now, honey, you, you misunderstand him completely. Dave's a very eccentric type of chap. He has a lot of peculiar principles. Peculiar? All Dave wants is to make people happy. And you dare suggest that I do this? Go away with a perfect stranger? If we win, Miss Newton, but then I'm sure we will. But you'll travel as brother and sister. Oh, he's harmless. Just look at him. <laughs> brother and sister. Well, naturally, he was shocked when you jumped to the wrong conclusion. I suppose you want me to apologize to him. Well... Oh, that, that's quite all right. <laughs> you know, Dave, if it wasn't for my Poughkeepsie promotion, I'd like to make the trip with you. Say, if you win, how much dough do you get? $150,000. Hey, it just occurs to me, Dave. Who's going to hold the ticket? Well, would it be too much trouble if you did? Me? I trust him to do the right thing, don't you, Miss Newton? Oh, at all times. Here. Oh, thanks, baby. Goes right in the old wallet. Oh, yeah, 150,000 smackers. Uh, that's your picture in the wallet, Freddy? Oh, yeah. All-American tackle. Oh. Uh, you tell him, honey. We went to school together. Oh, I bet that was cozy. Well, good luck again, Miss Newton. And, Freddie, it's been a real pleasure. Oh, it's mutual. That's a very strange duck, honey. Very strange. And just what kind of a duck does that make you? Yeah, but, but what if he isn't at home? You sure he lives here? Sure, I'm sure. And I'm still, I still don't see why I had to come here. Well, because half the ticket's yours, baby. You've got to tell him that... Oh, well, good evening. My, I haven't seen you two for some time. Out of ten million tickets, he's lucky enough to draw a horse, and all he says is, I haven't seen you two for some time. What did you say? They drew your horse. Yours and Jean's. Patsy Q, she's running in the Derby. Patsy Q, uh, but the race isn't running until next week. Don't you understand, Dave? As long as the horse is going to run, why, this little old ticket of yours is worth dough already. A lot of dough. That's why we're here. Nick and Nick said they can get us $12,000. Yeah, but i got to catch a train to Poughkeepsie, so I'll be very brief. Now, do we take the 12000 or do we risk it all and win in 150000 Now, me, I say play her safe and take the twelve grand now. And what do you say, Miss Newton? Well, My I... My share of 12000 won't furnish quite the honeymoon I'd hoped for. What? I'm sorry, Freddie. What, what? Whoa, you can't go through with any crazy scheme like that. Why not? Well, it's impossible. That's why it's... Well, it's scandalous. It's bound to be misunderstood. Well, I'm afraid you have a deplorable lack of confidence in Miss Newton, Freddie. But I'll leave it all to her. Well, I... Now, wait a minute, Jean, before you say another word. What do you mean, another word? Well, it's just that I've changed my mind. What? Oh, not about you, uh, about the horse. I say let's shoot the whole works. Let's take a chance. Not sell? Yo, what do you say, girlie? I have nothing to say. Dave? How about it, Dave? 150000 or nothing? Oh, by all means. I, I don't see how we can possibly lose. What a character. Uh, who knows, but... Hey, look at the time. Oh, goodbye, honey. How about a big squeeze? Ah... And don't worry. I'll Goodbye. phone you. Goodbye, Freddy. Well, so long, chum. I see you at the races. <laughs> well, Miss Newton? Look, what kind of a man are you, and what kind of a girl do you think I am? Well, I think we both like to travel. What gives you the remotest idea I'd go? I'm a perfectly conventional person, Mr. Grant, and possibly the dullest you ever met. Please, Miss Newton, won't you allow me to take that risk? Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, when the derby's run, would you mind if I drop in at the book nook? I don't own a radio. Oh, by all means. Aunt Lucy's dying to see you again. She says you have an interesting face. Oh, 
Wonderful woman, that Lucy. And now the news I know all you sport fans have been waiting for. The results of the Derby run today at Epsom Town. England's most colorful sporting event of the year was run today under ideal Patrick conditions. Hugh. And before Patrick a record-breaking throng including Hugh. Steady, the steady, Empire's Lucy, most steady. And here are the results. One song was the winner by two lengths. Plum Tree second, oh, Bonnie Mae no, third, no. and King Perry fourth. Swan song, the winner, was written by Jockey Harry West and carried a hundred... Turn it off, Aunt Lucy. Owned by Sir Arthur and Lady... Well, at least we don't have to pose for the newsreels. Oh. oh, come on now. Cheer up, Aunt Lucy. Maybe it's just as well. Perhaps for you. But you know something? I'm sorry Jean missed the trip with you. So there. <gasps> Aunt Lucy. Well, I am. We think you're a very attractive man. Aren't you even sorry? Why, of course I am. Well, funny, I was so sure we'd win. Bye, Jean. Bye. Answer it, Jean. I'm in no condition. Darn that horse. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jean, honey. Did you hear the news? Oh, hello, Freddy. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad, huh? But little old Freddy's got a surprise. Now, you just go to Nick and Nick's. Tell him old Freddy sent you for the money. What are you talking about? About 6,000 bucks. I sold our, uh, I mean, your half the ticket. Sold it? When? Right after I left you and Dave. 6,000 bucks. But we said we wouldn't sell. Oh, you don't think I'd let my baby take a risk like that? And besides, did you ever think for one minute I was going to let that guy go off with my girl? Freddie, we went 50-50 on the ticket. Absolutely correct. And what did I do? I sold only your half of the ticket. I let his half ride. He stood to win 75 grand. But his horse didn't win, so just his tough luck, that's all. I see. Now go right over to Nick and Nick's. All right. I'll be down tomorrow. So long, honey. to Nick and Nick. The money's here in this envelope, and half of it's yours. Well, good old Freddy. Yes. Oh, but wait a minute. No, no. None of this is mine. He sold your half. Oh, no, it's, it's 50 50. Uh, Freddy said so. Oh, did he really? Mm -hmm. Well, when will we leave? Oh, please be serious. Well, I'm completely serious. I can't possibly go away with you. Then I can't possibly accept this money here. But it's yours. You need it. I know you must. I did need it, but only for one purpose. What? For our trip. An artistic experiment that people would confuse with something improper or whatever it is you'd think they'd do. Well, you can't ignore people. No. I found that out once before. But I didn't think you were people. Well, I'm not. What, what, what did you mean when you said experiment? Well, I meant the experiment of taking someone who was going to settle down happily and prosaically in Poughkeepsie and giving her one little holiday on a quite impersonal plane, of course, and then seeing if it would last her for the rest of her life. Impersonal, huh? That's right. Like a guide or, or a scientist making an experiment. But it's such a crazy idea. <laughs> Experiments are always crazy until they're proved. All right. Maybe I'm the one who's crazy now, but... Okay. Make the experiment. Well, that's good, Jean. We were two pigeons. Now I'm a guinea pig. Oh, this... Th th this is wonderful. Is it? Well, just make sure you understand now. A strictly impersonal guinea pig. Don Amici and Lucille Ball will be back with Act Two of Lucky Partners in just a moment. When you get an especially interesting letter, don't you like to share it with someone? That depends on who it's from, Mr. Kennedy. Well, this one's from Mrs. Ruth Willette of Wolf Creek, Kentucky. She says Wolf Creek is a small town in the wild, and at one time the dealers were out of luck, so... I struggled along with my laundry, never satisfied with the appearance of the nicer garments. When I began wearing summer clothes, I discovered they lacked the dainty freshness I so appreciated before. Then one day, I was able to get Lux Flakes again. After washing my life dresses, I noticed a decided difference between the appearance of the garments that had been Lux and the ones that I'd done with the other soap. Please let me express my deep and sincere appreciation of Lux Flakes for making wash day easier, for giving joy and satisfaction in wearing clothes that have distinctive freshness. Poise and graciousness can only come when one is well-groomed. And to be well-groomed, clothing must be clean and color-fresh. That's one of the nicest letters we've ever received, Sally. And it all goes to prove that, as Mrs. Roulette puts it, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. If your dealer's been out of Lux sometimes, keep trying. He's getting lots more now. Lux is worth waiting for. You know, Sally, Mrs. Roulette proved herself what actual washing tests showed. With strong soap, too hot water, and rough handling... 
Pretty things get old and drab looking in almost no time. But when the same kinds of things are washed with gentle, lukewarm Lux suds... That's a different story. They stay bright and lovely up to three times longer. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Lucky Partners, starring Don Amici as David and Lucille Ball as Jean. <laughs> Jean Newton, having faced the most perplexing problem of her life, has made her most drastic decision. She's become a guinea pig. The following day finds her in David Grant's newly purchased car, speeding away from the security of Aunt Lucy's book nook. The aspects of this purely impersonal experiment chill her righteous bones, but she's resolved to see it through. And seeing it through, she realizes, involves such things as polite conversation. On a day like this, it's nice being a guinea pig. Well, that's good. Uh, tell me, how do you like your car? My car? Yes, I don't believe in possession, so I bought it in your name. Well, thanks. I wish I could understand you. You know, I think you're running away from something. Well, maybe. Maybe I'm running away from the same things you're headed for. Security, respectability. I had them once. What happened? I'm sorry, but this experiment rules out anything in my past and anything in your future. We've time only to enjoy the poetic present. Well, I don't want to seem unpoetic, but could we stop at a Western Union somewhere? Well, certainly. I think I'd like to send a wire to Aunt Lucy and I guess Freddie, too. Oh, by all means. Oh, I'm glad you're not angry. Well, why on earth should I be angry? Well, I know that everything's all right and purely impersonal, but you must admit it may be a little difficult for Freddie to understand. Yes, yes, that's true. So I'll just let him know that the scenery's lovely and I'm having a good time, and that'll show him that everything's all right, won't it? Well, I think it's a splendid idea. We'll wire him everywhere we stop. Well, maybe not everywhere. Where are we stopping first? Niagara Falls. Oh. Welcome to Niagara Falls, and may I express the hope you'll have a very happy, happy time here? Well, you may indeed. Uh, I'm David Grant. I wired from New York. Oh, quite so. Rooms for self and sister, not necessarily adjoining. That's right. Oh, front, please, front. Yes, sir. Miss Grant, 355. Mr. Grant, 526. The elevator's this way, sir. Uh, here you are, boy. You go on ahead with the bags. My sister and I will be up later. Sure, Mr. Grant. Fine. Why uh, later? Because I recommend something to eat. Oh, thanks. I'm really not hungry. No? Drink? Uh, David, I'm awfully tired, honestly. Oh, but it's so early. Okay, run along. I'll see you in the morning. Thanks again. Good night, sister. Good night. Oh, brother. Oh, having a bite to eat, I see. Yes, I am. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, no, indeedy. I just wanted you to know that I... Sent the roses to Miss Graham? Oh, a beautiful bowl, sir. Beautiful. Oh, Mr. Grant, about the rooms. The rooms? I feel just awful about those rooms I gave you. But adjoining rooms are now available, and if you'd care to move tonight, why... Well, I, I think that Miss, uh, my sister is already retired. Besides, we're completely satisfied, thank you. Oh, well, perhaps tomorrow? Oh, perhaps. Yes, sir. Oh, well, company, I see. Mm. Huh? Oh, oh. Hello. Well, hello. Please sit down. Would you, uh, would you like some ham and eggs? Well, I... Waiter. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, double my order, please, and some coffee now. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted to thank you for the flowers. I mean, that's why I came down. To thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> People just wouldn't believe this, would they? Believe what? Our being together like this. I mean, they'd think it wasn't like this. <laughs> Frankly, I didn't quite visualize it like this either. I, I mean, it, this is so pleasant. <laughs> oh. Are you thinking about something? Yes. A secret? No, no. Freddy. Freddy. Yeah. Why? Well, after all, we do owe it all to Freddy, don't we, Jean? Yes. Uh, David, what happens after? After what? The trip. Oh, well, I take you home and you get married. Oh, no, I mean, what's going to happen to you? Oh, oh. Well, I don't exactly know. Something will turn up. It always does. Oh, Mr. Grant. Yes. I feel so much better, Mr. Grant. Oh, you do? Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. I took the liberty. I changed you and Miss Grant to adjoining rooms. What? The bags are moved. You've done the hotel a great favor. Well, as long as it's a favor. Oh, yes. I'm sure the management will appreciate it. Well, I want the management to feel free to call upon us at any time. Oh. <laughs> By all means. What am I saying? 
Well, these are our new rooms, I guess. Yes. <laughs> you take this one, and I'll take that one. Here's your key. Thanks. Good night. Oh, uh, the room, you better see if you like it first. Oh, it's fine, fine. Oh, but let's see. Okay. Beautiful. Well, well. Look, it's pretty. Hmm, very nice. Very nice. Well, one of you two better start lying. Just what are you doing here? I followed you here, that's what. Just what do you mean coming on a trip like this with him? What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean you're coming home to marry me like we agreed. You agreed that I take this trip first, remember? I can testify to that. You shut up. You think you could take my girl and... And what? Never mind. Maybe you two would rather talk it over alone. I'll go to my room. Well, I used to think he was just crazy. Now I don't trust him. Well, that means you don't trust me either. Well, why should I? Now that I know he isn't crazy. I think you'd better leave. What? Yes. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. Okay. Only don't be surprised if I don't appear to be waiting when you come back. Yes, Freddy? I'll go, but I warn you, it may be for good. Maybe. Oh, I just can't understand you. I, I, I just can't. David? Come in. I'm sorry about Freddy. Oh, now, don't blame Freddy. Try looking at it from his point of view. Well, anyway, he's gone. I don't envy him traveling all night. It'll teach him not to be so suspicious. Well, good night. Oh, what a lovely fireplace. I love fireplaces in bedrooms, don't you? Well, haven't, haven't you one? I, I didn't notice. Uh-uh. Well, we'll change rooms. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Good night. Good night. You got a room? Oh, yes, indeedy. Alone? Yeah. Sign here, please. Okay. Call me at 2 o'clock. P.M.? A.M. A.M. Yes, sir. And don't forget. Oh, is that the right time? Yes, sir. Just 11 o'clock. Thanks. Hello? Did I wake you up? Oh, no. Can you hear the music? Yes. Nice, isn't it? Nice. Like a lullaby. Lovely. Is the moon shining through your window? Uh huh. Did you arrange that too? <laughs> Why certainly. I can just see you. A shaft of pale blue light falling across your room and your face like a soft shadow on your pillow. Can you really see me? Well, of course I can. I have a wonderful imagination. Well, pleasant dreams, Jean. Pink eyed rabbits, curly haired lambs, and ribbons and bells. Sunny Meadows. You sleep yet? Oh, no. Jean. Yeah? How would you like to jump out of bed and get into that lucky dress you told me about and have the last few dances with me? We're still tired. Wonderful. I'd love to. Wonderful. Hurry now. I'll meet you in the lobby in 10 minutes. Grant. Good evening. I called the terrace, Mr. Grant. Your table's waiting. Uh, the new rooms are satisfactory, I trust? Oh, they're perfect, but my sister should have the one with the fireplace. Can you switch them? Oh, it'll make me very happy, Oh, too. don't put them to all that trouble. Oh, but we're making him happy. Come on, let's find that music. Having a good time? Well... Nobody knows who we are or what we're doing here. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Hmm? Two tables down, that elderly couple. You know them? I've never seen them before in my life. It's funny, they've been sort of smiling at us since we've been here. David, they're nodding at me. They're getting up. Are you sure you don't know them? Positive, I know. I hope we're not intruding. Oh, well, no, no, not a bit. But there's something we'd like to know. Are you superstitious? And do you believe in luck? Oh, yes, we do, don't we, David? Well, we've been very lucky. Then would you come out with us? Out? Just across the terrace and into the garden. It's very nice, really. There's something we'd like to show you. Perhaps share with you. Jean? Well, uh, 
Well, why not? You think we're adults, don't you? But we're really not. Just old and happy. Show them the way, Alpha. Their feelings. It's quite dark here. Can you see? Oh, yes, it's beautiful here, these old trees and shadows. Just a little way further. Oh, this is it. This is the threshold. Threshold to what? Why, to whatever you want on the other side. Of course, my dear. See? It's a bridge over this little stream. Now, you pick her up and carry her across the bridge. <laughs> That's fine. I, aren't you coming? Oh, no. We crossed it a long time ago. Well, come on, David. Okay. Up. Now what? Why, you kiss her, of course. Huh? Oh. Fine. Fine. I said fine, fine. Oh, oh. <laughs> now you carry her back across the bridge. And over here is the wishing well. Yes. Fifty years ago tonight, we stood right here and wished that our marriage might last forever. You do understand, don't you? It's just that you two look so happy and shining when we saw you inside that we wanted you to have our good luck. Good night. Good night. Jean? Yes? I apologize. What for? For kissing you. I promised it would be strictly impersonal. Either we must go back to being as we were or else we can't go on with this trip. But why? Because that's how it was going to be, remember? Now let's get inside and dance. Would you mind very much if we don't? It's nearly 12.30. I think I'll go to bed. Oh? Good night, David. We can shake hands, can't we? Uh, quite impersonally? Why, of course. Aren't you coming in, too? Oh, uh, later, I think. Uh, don't forget, you'll have the room with the fireplace. Here's the key. I'll leave yours at the desk. Thank you. Well, what time do we leave in the morning? Would nine be too early? Nine would be swell. Thank you, David. Good night. Clock, thanks. All right, come on. Open this door. Open it up. Who is it? It's your fiance. That's who it is. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll give you ten seconds, or I'll bust it in. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? This is my room now. Oh, sure, sure. We changed rooms. Oh, was the other one haunted? Now, look, I don't like you following me, spying on me. It's disgusting. Where is that guy? Where is he? I haven't inquired. He's probably next door. Get packed. I'm taking you home. You are? What kind of a sap do you think I am? But before we leave, I'm going to tear that wolf to pieces. I'll murder him. You let him alone. Is this his room? Yes, but if you think for one minute... That's all I want to know. All right, come on, Grant. Be a man and open this door. Grant, open up. All right, I'll go in after you. Freddy, put down that fire axe. That ain't for him, that's for the door. On him, I use just my natural strength. There. All right, Grant. Put up your dukes. Hey, hey where is he? David? He's gone. Oh, skipped, huh? He probably went for a walk, maybe. I took his baggage for exercise? Wouldn't be surprised if he stuck you for the bill. Hello. Hello, give me the desk. Hello. Hey, what's happened to Mr. Grant? Mr. David Wolf Grant. Uh-huh. Checked out, huh? Did he pay his bill? Oh, he did, huh? Give me that phone. Where did he go? This is Miss Newton. I mean, Miss Grant. Oh, he did? And took the car? Oh, well, will you send it up right away, please? Thank you. Send what up? He left me a note. Well, that's very thoughtful of him. Always a gentleman, even when he takes the car and ditches you. Do you still want to drive me back to New York? You got a date with him there? No, I haven't got a date with him there. Okay, then I'll wait for you in the lobby. (laughs) 
Sorry, officer. I didn't realize I was going so fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Driver's license? Yes. Here. Is your car? Well, not exactly. Well, whose exactly is it? Well, it belongs to Miss Newton. Does hmm. she know you got it? Well, in a sense, no. That's she... the sense I'm interested in. Where is she? Well, at this moment, she's at the Aragane Hotel, Niagara Falls, but she's asleep now, and I'd rather you didn't disturb her. I think maybe she wouldn't mind. Oh, I, I forgot. She isn't registered there as Miss Newton. Oh? As a matter of fact, she's registered as Miss Grant, my sister. Why? Well, that's rather a long story. Okay, it'll keep. Oh, thank you. You can tell it to me in the morning, to me and the judge. I'm arrested? Uh, you mean you're putting me in jail? Mm-hmm. But first you're going to find me that dame. Move over. Yes, sir. And get going. Yes, sir. And in case you're interested, officer... Yeah. I'm very unhappy. Very. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few minutes, our stars Don Amici and Lucille Ball will return in Act Three of Lucky Partners. Now, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a high honor is to be awarded this evening to the employees of Lever Brothers Company, our sponsors. An honor which climaxes one of the most encouraging stories I've ever heard. 3,000 miles away in a New York studio is the distinguished president of the National Safety Council, Colonel John Stilwell. Come in, Colonel Stilwell. Uh, where does your story start, Colonel Stilwell? Well, how long did it take the National Safety Council to change that picture? Three hundred thousand. Well, that's that's three quarters of our total American war casualties. That's a happy fact, Colonel, but how do you account for it? Such a saving of life and limb is really a, a very worthy accomplishment, Colonel Silwell. On behalf of the president of Lever Brothers Company, Mr. Francis A. Countway, and on behalf of all the men and women who comprise the Lever Brothers family of workers, it's my privilege to thank you for this very fine award. 
And we thank you, Colonel Stilwell, for being with us tonight. And now, back to our story. But first, let me invite you backstage after the play for a chat with our stars. The curtain's rising now on Act Three of Lucky Partners, starring Donna Michi as David and Lucille Ball as Jean. <laughs> About 50 miles from Niagara Falls, there's a town called Pocomo. And in Pocomo's police court, suspected of stealing an automobile, David now faces the judge. But David is not alone. The law likes witnesses. And Jean and Freddie have been forced to oblige. Well, now, let's see who you all are. You. What's your name? Frederick Victor Harper III. Insurance, Your Honor. Well, well. Know these people, do you? Oh, yes. Young lady's my fiancé. I am not. Well, well. Seems to be a little confusion. Remember now, under oath, under oath. What's your name, young lady? Jean Newton. Alias Jean Grant. No, Your Honor. Uh, that is, yes, Your Honor. Owner of the allegedly stolen conveyance. Oh, no. Uh, oh, yes, Your Honor. Yes and no, eh? We'll see, we'll see. That's what we're here for. And you're Mr. David Grant. Is that right? Well, no. Says so here. Says you are. But we're under oath, Judge. I am not David Grant. Then who are you? Paul Knight Somerset. Paul You're Knight who? Somerset. What'd you say? Who? Who? Paul Knight Somerset. Somerset. Well, well. Court's adjourned. Got to figure this out. Lock him up. Paul Knight Somerset. Thanks a lot for coming, Wendell. So it appears you've set the world on fire again. Yeah. You should see this town. Discovering you is the biggest thing that's hit it in 50 years. You're all over the New York newspaper, too. And Jean won't talk to me. The Pocomo Chamber of Commerce has just made you an honorary member. Hotel is jammed. Business booming. Can they make anything out of this? Of course not. We're going to be in court tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. At five minutes after 10, I guarantee to have the case dismissed. Thanks, Wendell. <laughs> Wait in this handy room, Paul. They'll be ready for us any minute. Jean. How do you do? Hiya, Dave. Uh, I mean, Paul. Hello, Freddy. I just want to tell you again, no hard feelings. Thanks. Boy, what a mob in there. What a lot of contacts I'm going to make. Jean, I, I wish I could make you understand. I'd rather you didn't try, David. Oh, not David, Jean. Paul. Now, why don't you break down? He's a celebrity. You can't expect Freddie, him. Freddy, please. <laughs> I tell you, Paulie, you just can't figure women, can you? Uh, Gene, <laughs> uh, this is my attorney, Mr. Wendell. How do you do? How do you do? I wish you'd let him represent you. It's a very simple matter, really, Miss Newton. I don't need an attorney. I've done nothing that I can't explain myself. We're ready. Come along. Come on, Freddie. Yeah, they can't begin without us. Uh, Wendell, wait a minute. Yes? Thanks for everything, but I just decided I don't need a lawyer either. What? Run along, Wendell. I'll let you know how I make it Paul! <laughs> Here, here, here now, 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 now. No liberty. Court of law, you know. More witnesses I hear, more confused I get. Now, where's the girl's aunt? Oh, uh, me, Your Honor? Come here. When did you first meet Mr. Somerset? A day or two after he whistled at her and gave her the dress. <gasps> and Lucy... Shush, hush now. Shush, hush. He gave her a dress. Oh, and what a dress. Cost at least $200, silver beads and spades. My, my. And, and how did your niece explain such an expensive present? Oh, she didn't. She denied he gave it to her. Now, about this trip, where did he get the money for it? You know? Oh, that's easy. My niece gave it to him. Dear, dear. Step down. Yes. Next witness. Hotel clerk. Where's the hotel clerk? Right here, Your Honor. Remember this telegram? Hmm? Oh, indeedy. Please reserve two rooms not necessarily adjoining. What did that mean to you? Come, come, come. Why, Your Honor, that means that they must adjoin. <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. Shush, shush now. Shush, shush. Shush. Court of law, you know. That's better. Mr. Harper? Mr. Harper, are you or are you not engaged to Miss Newton? Well, I was engaged to her, Your Honor, and I think I may say of every confidence I shall be again. Were you engaged when she went off on that trip? Oh, yes, sir. You approved? Well, maybe not at the time, but I realize now I was unduly suspicious and narrow-minded. Oh? Well, I found out who Mr. Grant really was. I mean, a celebrated celebrity and, well, you know. I never heard tell that celebrities were any more to be trusted with a pretty girl than anyone else. Well, this ain't butter and mining bread. Miss Newton, please. Right here, Miss Newton. Now, just remember, we're here to protect you. Thank you, Your Honor. Pray don't mention it. Now, how did this all start, this trip and everything? I was talked into it, Judge. First by Mr. Harper and then by Mr. Somerset. I thought Mr. Harper was again the idea. Oh, 
He was, but Mr. Somerset talked him into it, too. Good talker, huh? Oh, yes. And I was to be a guinea pig or something. A what? Judge, do I have to go into all of this? Oh, my, yes. Well, I warn you, it's going to sound kind of crazy. It was crazy. I was crazy to fall for it, too. It was supposed to be a friendly little trip as brother and sister. Oh, please, Your Honor, I can't make it sound like he did. It was... it was sort of a... well... Oh, you know what I mean. Did he keep on being just brotherly? Well, not entirely, Judge. Overstepped the mark, eh? Kissed you, I suppose. Just once, and then a little later, he drove away in the automobile. Thank you, Miss Newton. That's all. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, pray don't mention it. Your Honor. Yes? As my own counsel, may I cross-examine the witness? Go ahead. Thank you. Miss Newton, is it a fact that since he left you at Niagara Falls, my client has made repeated attempts to see you... Who's your client? I'm my client. (laughs) And you refuse to give him a chance to explain? Well, Your Honor, will you be kind enough to tell the witness to answer? Got to answer him, young lady. But don't be scared. We're here to protect you. Thank you. Pray don't mention it. (laughs) I was saying, you refuse to listen to my client. Yes. Did he leave a note for you at Niagara Falls? You know perfectly well you did. You did. Have you got it with you? I tore it up in little pieces. Miss Newton, do you believe that my client was sincere in his feelings for you? Your Honor, he's only trying to make me talk to him now because I wouldn't talk to him outside. Is that right? Definitely. Sorry. Can't allow you to discuss your personal feelings. But, Your Honor, if I can't explain my reasons If Miss Newton is interested in your reasons, she can ask you when you're on the stand. Well, in that case, no further questions. But I have. You're the painter, huh? Paul Knight Somerset? I was. What are you now? Oh, not much of anything. Just a loafer, eh? Well, it's a little harsh, perhaps. Depends on how you look at it. Yes, yes. Did you accept $3,000 from Miss Newton? Yes. Persuaded her to go on a trip with you and then made love to her? I kissed her once. I don't care about statistics. <laughs> Answer my questions. Yes, Your Honor. Then you deserted her and made off with her automobile. Exactly. Well, didn't take long to get that cleared up. Your turn now, Miss Newton. Well, I, I'd just like to say that he bought the car with his own money, so I guess he had the right to take it back. That's for the court to decide. Anything else? No, thank you, Your Honor. Pray don't mention it. Your Honor, uh, being my own counsel, am I entitled to ask myself a few questions? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Mr. Somerset, when you asked Miss Newton to go on this trip, were you in love with her? Well, I, I didn't think so at the time, but... Now I know that I was. Your Honor, I object. Personal feeling. Objection sustained. Go on, Mr. Somerset. Tell me, Mr. Somerset, when did you fall in love with Miss Newton? Well, I I think it must have been when she said she had a proposition. One more word and you'll be in contempt of court. (laughs) Pray, don't mention it, Your Honor. I'm finished. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Somerset, do you think that a man with your record had any right to make love to her? I do not. That's why I ran away, and I'm extremely sorry. I warned you, Somerset. I oh, hear judge, my... judge, may I ask him a question? Go right ahead, Miss Newton. Mr. Somerset, do you mean to suggest that it was because you had once been in jail that you walked out on me? I mean, on my client? Well, it was partly that. And what else was it? Oh, my whole mode of life. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Exactly what's the matter with your mode of life? Nothing from my point of view, but a great deal from everyone else's. I've been described as a beachcomber, a screwball, even as a loafer. <coughs> You used to be described as one of the best painters in the country, but you haven't really painted in three years. Why? Your Honor, I object. Come, come. Answer the little lady. Well, because of some paintings. I published them in a book. What kind of painting? The kindest thing said about them was that they were documentary in nature. I painted some of our better-known citizens and institutions in such a manner that I was sued for libel. You lost the case? Oh, decidedly. I was fined heavily. Well, couldn't you pay the fine? Yes, but I went to jail instead. A matter of principle. Is it true that since then this book of your paintings has become practically a classic? So they tell me. Then it was just bitterness and resentment at the injustice of the decision that made you stop painting. And that keeps you loafing and making caricatures now. Oh. Yes or no? Yes. And you're in no way ashamed of yourself and your attitude? No. Well, in case you're interested, I am thoroughly ashamed of you. That's all. Thank you, Your Honor. Step down, Mr. Somerset. Well, it appears we have not one but three defendants charged with various offenses. I'll take Mr. Harper first. Oh, yes, Your Honor, I'm right here. Any man who would let Miss Newton go off with another man is a dope. 
I can't fine you for being a dope, but for destroying one hotel door with a fire axe, the penalty is $25. Now go sit down and think about it. Now for Miss Newton. Well, Your Honor? Miss Newton seems to be a much wrong little lady. A little too trusting, perhaps, but otherwise in no way to blame. Obviously, there is no case against Miss Newton. You can sit down, too. As for Paul Knight Somerset, I'm not too happy with his record. And it seems to me he's gone out of his way to confuse this court. To begin with... Your Honor, you can't say things like that about him. I was merely about to repeat the same things you said. Well, I can say them, but you can't. You owe Mr. Somerset an apology. Young lady, I've granted you a great deal of freedom in this court But and... you do. You owe him an apology in the name of the whole bench. It was terrible what they did to him. Just because some stupid judge couldn't tell the difference between works of art and... I'm getting pretty mad, Miss Newton. But artists aren't like ordinary people. They're sensitive. So sensitive that if you hurt them even the littlest bit, they run in a corner and, and you can't get anything out of them. They won't paint. They let their feelings run away with them. And then they run away from their feelings. And, and they don't know what it means to the girl they've made fall in love with them. And you're to blame because you stand for the law, and you certainly ought to apologize to Mr. Somerset in the name of the law. And now you can put me in jail for contempt of court if you want to, because I'm finished. Well, well. Yeah. Mr. Somerset. Yes? Did I understand you to say you were in love with Miss Newton? Oh. I remember you're still under oath. In that case, yes, Your Honor. Miss Newton, in the course of that barrage you just leveled at me... Did I hear you say that you were in love with Mr. Somerset? Well, I guess I did let it slip, Your Honor. Well, I don't know what there's left for me to say. You can apologize to him. Somerset, she seems to think it would make you feel better and persuade you to start a new and useful life again. So here goes. I know the judge who sentenced you went to school with him. Personally, I think he's pixelated. I'm very happy to apologize. Now get out of here, all of you. I'm going fishing. <laughs> You are now leaving Pocomo Township. David. Hmm? You sure this is the right road to New York? Oh, sure. And I think it's very nice of you to let me drive you back. If we were going the other way, the road would go to Niagara Falls. That's right. You know, I just thought of a wonderful experiment. Nothing impersonal, I hope. Purely unscientific. How does it work? Well, you take a little gold ring and a funny little judge in Pocomo says some magic words and bang. What happens? In 50 years, I'll give you an exact answer. David? Hmm? Turn the car around. Jean? Hmm? This is the road to Niagara Falls. Before our stars return for their curtain calls, let's drop in on the family next door and see what's going on. Patsy! Patsy? Come on, in the house. House? What house? Oh, my nice, clean blanket. Just because I hang my blanket over two lines to dry doesn't make it a house for you to play in. It's a beautiful house, Mommy. There's a front and a back. And up between the ropes is a roof. Yes, dear, I see. But I just luxed that blanket, and I don't want it to get all dirty again. It smells nice, Mommy. Yes, it's all fresh and clean for us to use when the weather gets cold. It's soft, too. It is soft, honey, and clean and fluffy. So let's keep it that way. How about those lightweight blankets you've been using all summer? Are they clean and ready to put away? Or the ones Junior brought home from summer camp? Warm, breezy days are ideal blanket washing weather. Here's how to do them. Make extra rich, lukewarm suds with mild lux flakes. Squeeze them through the blanket. Never rub or wring or twist. What about women who have washing machines? Mm -hmm, they're lucky. Be sure to use enough water to float the blanket and run the machine only three minutes. Then rinse thoroughly in lukewarm water and hang it in the shade to dry. What's this about hanging it over two lines? Hanging a blanket over parallel lines helps keep it from sagging at the edges. With gentle lux care, your blankets will stay soft fluffy and unshrunken a long, long time. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. Don Amici and Lucille Ball were lucky partners in tonight's play. And after hearing these fine performances, I, I think we've had a bit of luck, too. Thank you, C.B. It's the first time that I've acted before two producers. You knew that Don was forming his own picture company. Yes, so I've heard. Uh, 
What are you going to make for your first picture, Don? Well, nothing's finally settled, but there's a great idea turning over in my mind. Has it got room to turn? Uh, an idea for, uh, for a picture, Don? Uh-huh. The story of Dr. Wassel. <laughs> the story of Dr. Wassel? Uh, I don't wonder you're impressed. Great idea, huh? But, uh, Don... Hasn't it been done before? Oh, no, no. And even if it had, I mean a big production, Technicolor and big names. Oh, I see. Uh, somebody like uh, Gary Cooper, maybe, or, or Lorraine Day. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> maybe I could help on it, Don. Oh, no, no, CB. Uh, not that I don't think you're a great producer, but Dr. Wassel, that, that'd be over your head, to put it baldly. <laughs> You know, Don, I think you're going to go places in pictures. Go places? Look where he just went. <laughs> and C.B., when I finish Dr. Wassel, I'm going to give it to you for the Lux Radio Theater. Well, oh, thank you, Don, thank you. But we've already counted on producing Dr. Wassel here. For next Monday night? No, no. For next Monday night, we have another exciting play. As full of warmth and action as the heartbeat of America. It's the 20th Century Fox hit, Home in Indiana. And we can promise you a four-star performance with Walter Brennan, Charlotte Greenwood, June Haver, and Jean Kane, all in their original screen roles. Sounds good enough for Don to make a picture of, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. You brought a lot of pleasure to a lot of homes tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Walter Brennan, Charlotte Greenwood, June Haver, and Jean Kane, Crane, in Home in Indiana. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Now, a brief reminder from Uncle Sam to save those waste fats and greases from your kitchen. They're more urgently needed now than ever for medical supplies to save American lives and for explosives to help win the victory sooner. Brush your waste fats and greases to your butcher and he'll give you two meat points plus four cents for each pound. Next month, October 16th, the Lux Radio Theater celebrates its 10th anniversary on the air. We'd like you to share in this celebration by helping us select the play and stars you'd like most to hear. Send your suggestions on a postcard to C.B. DeMille, Post Office Box 9, Hollywood 28, California. Or use the ballot which your Lux Toilet Soap dealer will be glad to give you. Lucky Partners was presented through the courtesy of RKO, producers of Bride by Mistake. Don Amici can currently be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Greenwich Village. Lucille Ball appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture, Kismet. Heard in tonight's play were Carlton Cadell as Freddie, Harry Tyler as the judge, and Verna Felton, Noreen Gamill, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Arthur Q. Bryan, Leo Cleary, and Norman Field. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, Reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Home in Indiana, starring Walter Brennan, Charlotte Greenwood, June Haver, and Gene Crane. Hear ye, hear ye. Kate Smith and Aunt Jenny join up to bring you their friendship cocoa cake. Lusciously light, chocolatey layers piled with fluffy sea foam frosting. So delicious and so easy. Made in five minutes in just one bowl with new Easy Mix Spry. See the Spry ad in October women's magazines and newspapers. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.